Hello everyone and welcome to day three of special right triangles. Uh, we are going to get into a certain kind of special right triangle called a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay, let's take a look at our first two examples. We need to write the sides and angles from shortest to longest and the angles we'll do from smallest to biggest. So remember that the short side or the shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. First we need to label all of our angles so that we know uh, what the measures are. So we know that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So far we have a 60 degree triangle or a 60 degree angle, so 60 here. We also have a 90 here and we don't know this one. So let's go ahead and solve for x here to find our missing angle. 60 plus 90 is 150, and we know they all have to add up to 180. Subtract that 150, and you end up with 30 is equal to x, our missing angle. So our angle right here is 30. So let's start with the angles. We're going to list our angles from smallest to largest. Our smallest angle is the 30 degree angle here, which is angle P. And then our next largest angle, or our medium angle, is angle M at 60. And our next largest angle, or our largest angle in our triangle, is angle N. Now let's do the sides. So my smallest side is going to be opposite my smallest angle. My smallest angle is this one. So the smallest side is opposite that one. So smallest side is MN. Our next small side is going to be across from our medium angle which is the 60 go across there and that side np and of course our longest side is going to be opposite our largest angle which is 90 so that side mp okay for number two this one we don't have any angle measures but the same concept from before works for this one the smallest angle is going to be opposite the smallest side so let's first list our sides from order from smallest to largest. Our smallest side is six inches, so that would be side DB. Our next smallest side is eight inches, so that would be DC. And the longest side is 10 inches, that's side CB. To find my smallest angle, it's going to be across from my smallest side. My smallest side was DB, so go across from that, and that would be angle C. My medium side was DC, go across from that, and you get angle B. And last, my longest side was angle CB, or side CB. So I go across from that, and I get angle D. So in a right triangle, the largest angle, or it's always going to be a right angle, that is the largest angle, will always be opposite the longest side, or the largest side. We also call that the hypotenuse. And then the smallest angle will always be opposite from the smallest side. So in a special 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we are going to label the sides from short, medium, and the hypotenuse by their length given the following angle measurements. Let's take a look at our smallest angle. Our smallest angle is 30. And remember that the smallest angle is always opposite the smallest side. So that side right there is my small side. So we're going to label it the small side. Next is my medium side. My medium angle is this one right here. And it is opposite this side right here. So this is the medium side. And lastly, my longest side is going to be opposite my largest angle, which is the 90 degree angle. So this side right here is my hypotenuse. So I'm going to label that the hypotenuse or the longest side. Okay, now we're going to get into the rules for my 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So I want to draw your attention to this example right here. So you can see that my smallest side across from the 30 is this one is just an X, is just an X. My hypotenuse, or my longest side, 
is 2x or twice the length of my smallest side. My medium side or my middle side is x times root 3. So take your smallest side and multiply it by root 3 and you'll get the length of the medium side. So if we are getting larger, we are going to multiply. Say we're given the shortest side and we want the hypotenuse, we're going to multiply by 2 to get that length. But if we're getting smaller, we need to divide. Say we're given the hypotenuse, we're given the longest side and we want to get the smallest side, we're going to divide. When I have my short leg, I want the middle leg, I'm going to multiply, because we're getting bigger, by square root of 3. When I want the hypotenuse, when given the short leg, I'm going to multiply by 2. When I'm given the middle leg and I want to find the short leg, I'm going to divide by square root of 3. When I am given the middle leg and I want the hypotenuse, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the short leg first before I find the hypotenuse and then use that measurement to find the hypotenuse. When I'm given the hypotenuse or the longest side and I want the short leg, I'm going to divide by 2. And when I'm given the hypotenuse and I want the middle leg, the first thing I'm going to do, similar to the last one, is find the short leg. and then find the middle leg. Okay, so those are your steps of how to find each of those side lengths given whatever. So let's do a couple examples. On number one, we need to find the short leg when given the hypotenuse. So we are going to be using this step right here. So what I have is the hypotenuse. I'm going to abbreviate just a hypo and I need the short leg. So we are going to be getting smaller. So we need to take 16 and divide it by two and we end up with eight. So our short leg is eight. Number two, again, I have the hypotenuse. I know it's this side right here and I know it's 12. I need the short leg. and I'm getting smaller. So I'm gonna take 12, which is the length of my hypotenuse, and divide it by two, and I'm gonna get six. So my short leg is six. Okay, now we are going to find the hypotenuse given the short leg. So what I have is the length of this side right here, which is the short leg. So I have the short leg. I need the hypotenuse. I'm going to be getting bigger because I have the short leg. Hypotenuse obviously is the longest side, so we're getting bigger. So to find that, I'm going to take 17 and I'm going to multiply it by two. And that is 34. So my hypotenuse is 34. Number four, again, given the short leg, I need to find the hypotenuse, so I have the short leg. Need to find the hypotenuse. I'm getting bigger, so I'm going to take that 10 and multiply it by 2, and I get 20. So my hypotenuse is 20. Okay, for number 5 and 6, I need to find the middle leg, which is this side right here, given the short leg. So I have the length of the short leg. It's 11. I need the length of the middle leg. So from short to middle, that's going to be still getting bigger. So I'm going to take my small side, 11, and I'm going to multiply it by root 3. Remember, we're just following that rule. So 11 times root 3 is just 11 root 3. So that's my answer. Number 6, same thing. I'm given the length of the short side, or the short leg, and I need the middle leg length. 
My shortest side is 5 root 3. It is opposite that 30. So we are getting bigger. So we're going to take 5 root 3 and we're going to multiply it by root 3. So following that rule. 5 root 3 times root 3. When we multiply root 3 by itself, we just get 3. So 5 times 3, which is 15. So my middle leg is 15. A number seven and eight. Now we're given the length of the middle leg and we need to find the length of the short leg. So I have the middle leg. It is 15 root three. It's this side right here. I need the short leg. So we are getting smaller. So we're gonna take that 15 root three. Again, we're following the rules from up above and we're gonna divide that by root three. And you can also write this as a fraction, so 15 root 3 over root 3. These cancel, and we're left with just 15. So our shortest side is 15. For number 8, again, I have my middle leg. I need my short leg. I'm getting smaller. So I'm going to take that middle leg, which is 6, and divide it by root 3. So I'm going to write that as a fraction, 6 divided by root 3. We cannot have radicals on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. That will not change the value of my fraction. I'm going to move off to the side bit here. So 6 times root 3, that's just 6 root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And now this can reduce 3 divided by, or 6 divided by 3 is 2 over root 3. So my short leg here is two root three. Okay, number nine, we do have a word problem. The size of a television is determined by the diagonal measure of its rectangular screen, which is true. The figure below represents a television screen. What is the size of the TV? And we're going to round to the nearest inch. So what we're looking for is the diagonal length right here. So that is the hypotenuse. We need the hypotenuse. We do have a right angle here, and we also have that 60 degree angle there. The side opposite the 60, remember, is the middle side, which is this one right here. And we're told that that's 42. So we have the middle. So we have the middle leg, we need the hypotenuse. So our rules up above say that when we have the middle leg, and we need the hypotenuse, the first thing we do is we find the short leg. So to find the short leg when given the middle leg, I'm going to take 42 and I'm going to divide it by root 3. So 42 divided by root 3. Again, multiply top and bottom by root 3. And I get 42 root 3 over 3. 42 divided by 3 is 14, so 14 root 3 is the measure of our short leg. 42 root, or 14 root 3. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our short leg, second step, step 2, find hypotenuse. To find the hypotenuse when given the short leg, I'm going to take that number, 14 root 3, and multiply it by 2, and I'm going to get 28 root 3 as my answer. So 28 root 3 is the exact measure of this, but I am rounding to the nearest inch, so I need to find the numerical value of that, and we'll just do that by putting it into our calculator. And when I do that, I'm going to get 48.49, but again, I'm running to the, the nearest inch, so this will round to just 48 inches. Okay, number 10. On this one, it gives us a bunch of information, but we don't know necessarily which side we're given and what we need. So we need to first identify what we have and what we need. So let's first look at number 10. Number 10, we have the length of this side here. It's 12. We know it's 12. To figure out if that's the shortest side, the middle side, or the longest side, we look at its opposite angle. Our opposite angle in this case is 30, which means we have the smallest side. Well, 
what we need is this side right here with the x and again to figure out if this is the middle or the hypotenuse we'll look at our opposite angle in this case is 60 so we need the middle side so we are getting bigger and to go from the small to the middle i'm going to take my 12 and multiply it by root 3 and that gives me 12 root 3 that's my answer Okay, number 11. Again, let's identify what we have, what we need. I have the length of this side and it's across from the 60, which means I have my middle leg. The side with the variable is this side right here, which is across from the 30, which is my small side. So we are getting smaller. So to go from the middle side to the small side, I'm going to take my middle side length, which is 4 root 3, and I'm going to divide it by root 3. So again, write this as a fraction if you'd like. Those cancel, and we're left with just 4. So my smallest side in this case is 4. Okay, number 12. Let's first identify what we have and what we need. What we have is this side right here. That side is our middle side, so we're going from our middle side. And we need the side with the variable, which is y, and that is across from my 90, which means we're going to our hypotenuse. So from our middle side to the hypotenuse. So the first thing, again, we're going to do is find my smallest side. So we're going to take our middle side length, which is 10 root 3, and we're going to divide it by root 3. So 10 root 3 divided by root 3 is just 10. So our smallest side is 10. Second step, step 2. We're going to find the hypotenuse now. To do that, we're going to take our smallest side, which we just found was 10, and we're going to multiply it by 2, and we get 20. So our hypotenuse is 20. Okay, for 13, let's look at what we have versus what we need. What we have is this side right here, which is across from my 90, which means we have the hypotenuse. So if we're going from the hypotenuse to what we need, which is this side right here, which is across from my 60. So we're going from the hypotenuse to my middle side. So the first thing again to do with this case is find the small side. So to go from the hypotenuse to our small side, we're going to take that number and divide it by 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. So my small side is 6. Step 2 is to take my small side and use it to find my middle side. So find middle side. My small side is 6, so we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by root 3. And we get 6 root 3. So 6 root 3 is my answer. Okay, last example. We have to find both x and y. The side with the x, this one right here, is across from the 30 degree angle, which means this is our small side. The side with the y, this one, is across from my 90, which means this is our hypotenuse, which leaves the side that we know the length of, the 9, this is our middle side. First thing, let's find our small side. So let's go from middle to small. So I'm going to take my middle side length, which is 9, and I'm going to divide it by square root of 3. So that's 9 divided by root 3. And remember, no radicals at the bottom. So I need to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. When I do that, I'm going to get 9 root 3 over 3. 9 and 3 can divide, and that just turns into 3 root 3. So that's the length of x. And now that we know my small side, I'm going to use my small side to go to the hypotenuse. So I'm going to take my small length, which is 3 root 3, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. 3 root 3 times 2 turns into 6 root 3. So that is y, 6 root 3. And I'm done. 
So that's it for day three, and I'll see you guys all again for day four. Bye!